All right, so now that we have heard quite a lot about various aspects of the structure of the International Astronomical Union, let's have a look how the Office of Astronomy for Education fits into that structure. And I brought you this little diagram, which basically is an overview diagram. So on the left, you have everything that is the self-organization of astronomers within the IEU. So this is where the scientists, the researchers, the IEU members get together to talk about certain topics, to make decisions about certain topics. And since astronomy is so rich in different topics, there are nine divisions which consist of 35 commissions. And each commission, if you will, has a, has a specialization. So uh, let's take the concrete example. Division C, Education, Outreach and Heritage, is what interests us here, of course, mo um, the most. President Susanna de Ostua. And within that division, there is Commission C1, Astronomy, Education and Development. And this is where the astronomy education activities of the IU happen. Paolo Bretonis is the president of that commission. So whenever the members of those co uh, commissions or divisions want to get something done, they have the possibility to set up a working group that is really a specific group with specific members and with a specific task. And one thing to note is that working groups by their nature are temporary. They are typically established at a general assembly of the IU and then they last until the assembly after that. And they are meant to be temporary. There are exceptions, there are some very few permanent working groups, but these working groups are really the tool for getting something specific done within a limited time frame. So that brings us to the right hand side because at some point the IU decided that in order to get things done that require a longer term commitment, working groups are not the right structure, so that is where the offices come in. So offices have resources, so staff that gets paid to do certain things, and they are, at least by their nature, um, permanent fixtures of the IAU. And you've already heard about the Office of Astronomy for Development, the Office for Astronomy Outreach, um, you can also see here the Office for Young Astronomers. We have not heard about that one as much um, because it's concerned with undergraduates, undergraduate summer schools, whereas the Office of Astronomy for Education and our activities are of course aimed at the primary and the secondary school sector. And with that, of course, there is considerable overlap to the, uh, the things that the Office of Astronomy for Development accomplishes and the tasks of the Office for Astronomy Outreach simply because education is such a powerful tool for development and because education and outreach frequently go together very closely. So there we already have very close collaboration partners and you have already heard about that. OAE, the Office of Astronomy for Education, is the newest kid on the block, if you will. We've only been operating since the beginning of this year, but we complete the quartet of IAU offices. So guidance for what the offices are meant to do can be found in the IAU's mission. I'll just reread the mission statement. The mission of the International Astronomical Union is to promote and safeguard astronomy in all its aspects, including research, communication, education, and development through international cooperation. And the IAU is more specific in a strategic plan 2020 to 2030. Goal five there is the IU stimulates the use of astronomy for teaching and education at school level. And again, we're talking about primary schools and secondary schools. So the fundamental question for the Office of Astronomy for Education is which actions that support astronomy education, that support teaching and education at school level are appropriate for the IU on an international level? Because clearly the most important things happening in education are the ones that are happening on location, where students interact with teachers, where students um, interact with educational resources. So the question is, what can we do to support that from an international level? And I'll give you a bit of an overview of what our aims are of supporting education on this level. The first is that there is a very general and universal goal that we want to pursue, and that is to foster professionalization. And there are two aspects to this. First of all, this concerns teachers. Teachers, of course, are trained in their subject. Teachers are trained in teaching techniques, in educational methods. 
So what the IAU, with its unique resources from professional astronomy, can do is to make sure that all teachers have access to high quality resources. Then we can support training. That's where the regional and international schools for astronomy education come in, that the OAE will organize. And as an aside, of course, organizing such schools that will be in collaboration, in coordination with existing efforts. You all know that there are already international training efforts. NASA, um, GTTP, Global Hands-On Universe are all operating internationally. And then finally, defining standards for resources and for training events. That is basically getting the community together and working towards a consensus of when is a, an educational resource a high quality resource and what are the criteria for high quality training events. Then there is another group that we want to support in their professionalization and there the shoe is on the other foot so to speak. Those are astronomers active in astronomy education. Can be professional astronomers, can be amateur astronomers. Astronomers of course know by definition a lot about astronomy and in particular about the subfield that they're working in, but they are not usually trained as teachers. So this is where we can come in and support astronomers in gaining knowledge in education about modern teaching methods, about evaluation techniques, about the educational aspects of certain topics. I mean, there are certain topics where there are challenges in teaching. Just think about all the misconceptions there are about the expanding universe, for instance. So this again is an effort where doing this internationally, looking at each other's best practices, um, trying to establish standards, what should an astronomer active in astronomy education know. Um, this is again something that we want to do with the OAE. And a big part of this is again first establishing standards by consensus and then of course to disseminate best practice examples. There's so many really cool things going on in astronomy education worldwide under very different conditions so we can learn from others and we can make sure that the best practice examples that we find and in whatever country we find them um, can be made better known. Then there's the question of creating and supporting infrastructure. So what infrastructure do you need if you want to foster astronomy education? First of all you need to make sure that everybody finds the resources they need. They need. And oftentimes it's not a problem of the resources not being there somewhere. It's a problem of the resources not being well known about those people who need the resources not being able to find them. So an educational material database is definitely something that is in our future, again in collaboration and coordination with those who have already done part of the work. And then of course also S3EDU. This goes to quality control again. So S3EDU, as most of you probably know, is a portal where you can publish astronomy education activities and it's peer-reviewed. So it has this inbuilt quality assurance and we are supporting that effort as well. Then there's the creation, the curation and the dissemination of resources. So one key word there that you will hear a lot in our future is OAE reviews. OAE reviews, think of review articles in astronomy. In the sciences, of course, a review article is when somebody takes together lit the literature on a, sh uh, on a subject, all those technical articles, and creates on that basis something that helps astronomers to get up to speed quickly and efficiently on a certain topic. And we want to do the same for those subjects that are interest in, interesting for astronomy education practitioners. Can be very practical things like how do I make the best use of remote observing or it can be something very general that is um, of overarching importance such as how can I take a training event or a teaching course and make it equitable, fostering diversity and making it inclusive. Then there's the question of fundamental astronomical resources. Um, again, this is where we do not want to reinvent wheels. That is why curating, that is searching out good resources, um, making them known, becomes important. But we also, for instance, have the multilingual glossary that we're working on in collaboration with the OAO. That is a glossary of the most important basic astronomical terms. So those terms that are apt to crop up in teaching. Um, and creating multilingual versions, explanations in each language. And with this, we hope to lay the foundations for faithful and good translations of educational materials. Since obviously, uh, for teaching, you need the resources in the language that your students speak. And translating excellent materials, best practice examples into different languages is going to be a substantial part of our work. 
And there's also the question, do we have, do teachers have all the images or the diagrams that they need for teaching? Do they have that available under licenses that allow them to use those images freely, Creative Commons licenses, and that is another area where we want to make sure that the basic resources are there. Then there's the more general question of working with each nation's astronomical community to promote astronomy in national and regional school curricula. Again, there the supporting role can be sharing experiences. There are some countries where astronomers have managed to work with their ministries of education to include astronomy. That is something to learn from. And then the second part of support is, of course, showcasing, but also um, helping to conduct studies that, at least so far, have shown that astronomy is a really good entry science to get students into the STEM subject, into science, technology, engineering, mathematics, and again, making those studies available as supporting arguments is another way of fostering this promotion of astronomy in curricula. So who will be doing the work? First of all, the Office of Astronomy Education is at Haus der Astronomie in Heidelberg. I'll say something about this on the next slide. Then we are getting additional institutions on board. Those will be the OAE centers and OAE nodes, so offices that are in different locations around the world that are part of the Office of Astronomy for Education and support its mission with resources, both with personnel and with funding. We are currently in the process of ex establishing the first OAE centers and OAE nodes, so I'm not going to say more about it at this point, but you're going to hear more about them later in 2020. Then the network of national astronomy education coordinators, um, we'll come back to that. And then of course the collaborators, so the scientists contributing to OAE reviews or other subjects. And here below you can see the founding of the OAE in 2019 with some of those people already pr present. I'll briefly go through the OAE at Haus der Astronomie. My name is Markus Pössl, I'm the director. My deputy is Caroline Liefke. We have three coordinators, Markus Nielbock, Neil Dieken, Juan Carlos Munoz. Natalie Fischer is very active as our primary school consultant, and most of you will have had contact with Gwen Sanderson, our organizational assistant. We are usually based at Haus der Astronomie when there's no pandemic going on, this beautiful galaxy-shaped building on the bottom left. And of course, it's also true that all of this would not be possible without the financial support of a number of contributors. So the Klaus Schira Stiftung is a private foundation that is supporting us significantly um, the Carl Zeiss Stiftung is making significant contributions and directly for this workshop, the Shaw IAU workshop, the Shaw Prize Foundation is providing the funding. So our gratitude to all of these since without them what we do would not be possible. Briefly for the NIAC teams, briefly because most of those listening to this talk during the workshop of course are part of those NIAC teams, you are our liaison to the local astronomical education communities and that means you have a key role in both ways. What the OAE does cannot be top-down. We need to, on the, on the contrary, we need to solicit from you the information about what does your country need, um, what is the specific kind of support that we can give your, uh, your community or more generally how can we organize our support for it to be more, to be most effective in, in the countries that we want to serve. The numbers, of course, are um, changing. Currently, 251 confirmed NIAX National Astronomy Education Coordinators from 77 countries. But as you can see, there are still some gray areas, so this is going to grow. All right, in conclusion, let me say we're all in this together. So this is a big community effort. Making the OAE work is a joint endeavor. And again, in particular, the NIAC network is interactive. We need you. We need to work with you to find a way forward for what you need. Of course, it's our task to see how this fits into the larger OAE mission. So it's a matter of growing together. We depend on goodwill on all sides and in meeting you or most of you in video conferences so far, um, we've been really struck by the enthusiasm and by the goodwill on your side. So this is really a, an invaluable resource. So thank you for being part of this. And all in all, this will hopefully enabled us to make a substantial difference together when it comes to astronomy education worldwide. So thank you for your attention. Down there is uh, some of the means to get in contact, stay in contact with us if you haven't already. And yeah, stay in touch and let's do this.